this shouldn't work. I'm going to try and print an entire functional water pump in one piece. Impeller casing everything. Anyone who's tried knows the brutal truth. 3D printed pumps leak. But can I make one actually watertight? In today's video, I'll show you exactly how I designed this print in place impeller pump. I'll show you specific tricks that I use to keep the moving parts separate. And I'll also let you into the secret on how to print dissolvable supports on a budget 3D printer. The only question is, will it actually pump? In the previous video, I tested that all parts could be printed or added without issue in the same orientation that I planned to print them in the print in place version of the pump. Along the way, I also tested a whole range of impeller designs to find out which one would give me the most useful pumping characteristics. Pause the video and go and check out that video first if you don't want the spoiler of which impeller was best. But after much testing, the best performing impeller was the red 10 vane axial and radial design, which has made it into the final design. The first step is to add the parts you want to print together in the same design with an interface separation of exactly two times the print layer height that you're going to print it with. For a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, this is typically 0.4 millimeters. Then create a new component in the design called interface that contains a body that fills the space between the interface you want to maintain. In this case, I will have two interface contact areas for the design at two heights in the design. Next, export all of the components, excluding the interface component, then invert the selection and export the interface component. The next steps work for Prusa Slicer and Chidi Slicer and should work for any Prusa Slicer based slicers out there. And it goes without saying that this would be even easier if you have either a multi-head printer or MS already. Start up the slicer, click on the print settings tab and increase the number of extruders from one to two. Click on each extruder and set the retraction length to one millimeter. Click on the custom G code tab and add either a single or couple of G code lines to the tool change code block. That will force the filament change at the start of each tool change cycle. Either M0 and or M600 if the printer understands this extended G code command. Click on the print settings and the multiple extruders menu and tick the wipe tower enable box and interface shell checkbox. This makes sure that a solid shell is generated between the adjacent materials so that when you remove the soluble supports, the part is closed and has its own top and bottom surfaces. Then import the parts to print in place design, then right click and add a part. Then select the interface object. Now assign the extruder one to the parts to print in place model and extruder two to the in interface model. If you're enjoying the video so far, then don't forget to subscribe as it really helps out the channel. After slicing the print, you should now see that there are only four filament changes planned. This is because a slicer automatically prints both interface print layers back to back, i.e. after the solid PLA material has been put down on the first layer and before the solid material is put down on the second layer. And because I have two separate levels of interfaces in the print, there are four changes in total. Pretty cool. Now select your favorite soluble support filament to print the interface parts with, making sure it's compatible with the material you're gonna print the pump in. For this design, I use BDOH. So to make it easier to see how this process works, I'm going to cut away most of the pump and we're first of all going to try to just print a region of the interface layer so we can see it switch between PLA and soluble support material and then we can use this to get a feel for how long it takes to dissolve the BVOH. That's the first change. Great, and the second change back to PLA. Right, it's done. Great, so far so good. But how easily will the BVOH dissolve and release the assembly? Let's leave the print in warm water, ideally somewhere warm, and see how it does. After about an hour, there was not very much to report. So in the end, I left it for three days, and ta-da, we have a full release. Look how smooth the surface is. This actually might work on a full print. It's great, look at the surface finish. This should just slide. Yeah, look at that. Just need to let it soak for a few days. Let's give it a go. First the bearings, then a bit of in situ grease, and the O-ring again. Time for another bearing, and we're off again. And now we're on to the filament changes. Change one to support material, change two back to PLA, change three back to support material, and change four back to PLA for the rest of the print. Now 
Let's chuck it in some water and leave it for the prescribed three days. If you want to massively speed up this process, you could splash out and get an ultrasonic bath cleaner that would dissolve the BVOH in no time. Last step is to coat it in epoxy as I wasn't very impressed with the ability of the clear lacquer to seal the surface in the last video. Okay, let's give the print in place pump a try. Oh, look. Hey, it works. It's working. I'm actually able to get a little bit of suction head. We'll see how much suction head this pump can generate later. But first, let's put this pump through its paces with the same set of tests that we put all the impellers through in the last video. The first test is the zero meter head pumping rate to see how long it takes to pump a liter of water into this bowl when the inlet and the outlet are the same height. Okay, here we go. Okay, so it's slower at pumping the litre than the equivalent red impeller. Oh, it's slipping quite far down the table. Okay, 16.9 seconds. Next test. Now I'm going to increase the height between the inlet and the outlet of the pump to one metre. And again, see how long it takes to fill up a litre inside the bowl. Okay, it seems a bit faster. Oh, third place, 21 seconds. Right, let's see how the position of the print in place pump changes from zero meter head to one meter head compared to all the other pumps that we did in the last video. As you can see it's climbing up the ranks, able to put out 2.9 liters per minute at one meter. Lastly, let's look at the, the max pumping height. In the end, the flow stops about 1.5 meters. Okay, so as a submerged pump, this pump is not working as well as the two part pump, probably because the internal surface isn't quite as smooth. But the one thing that I'm really hoping that this pump can achieve is to be able to work as more of a ground pump where the pump doesn't need to be submerged because it's actually airtight enough to be able to generate some suction head. So let's measure how far out of the water we can lift the pump whilst it's still pumping to get a maximum suction head measurement, 40 centimeters. Well, that's actually quite usable. Let's try it again to check that wasn't some weird fluke. Okay, great. 42 centimeters. Okay, gives us an average of 41 centimeters. Fantastic. And lastly, this is what happens when you try and prime an airtight pump with mains water when there isn't a vent valve. See you next time.